Why don't we start off with that Trump trade, specifically Tesla? You just heard, uh, you know, our own Jim Cramer talk about it. a lot of reasons being attributed for that decline in Tesla. Some people think it's the rise in bond yields. Other people think that now Elon Musk, you may have taken on one too many side hustles with the Department of Government Efficiency. What is your take on this as far as the retail trader impact? Uh, what are you seeing on your platform? Well, I don't know if Elon Musk can ever take on too much. It seems like he's always has a, he always has a new business up his sleeve. So. I would dismiss that. I think from a retail standpoint, especially ahead of the election, we saw a lot of de-risking going into November 5th. Now, if you go back even a year and a half to two years in a rising rate environment, we saw unprecedented levels of cash being hoarded by retail investors that were getting high yields. Those yields started coming down, and the election became a risk event or a risk on event, especially for retail. Tesla has always been one of the number stock, number one stocks for retail investors. And just Trump's alignment, excuse me, Elon Musk's alignment with the Trump campaign just put Tesla on the forefront for a momentum trade. So we saw a whole lot of money coming out of cash that's been sitting in cash prior to the election. The election provided that catalyst to create an event. And whether it's Tesla, whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's SPY, right? Retail was looking for momentum, and they had plenty of cash to throw at it. All right. Uh, again, pullback yesterday, moving a bit higher in the pre-market right now. Um, I want to talk about some other parts of that so-called Trump trade. We just looked at the Russell 2000 futures. They're basically flat this morning. We saw transports trade a, a bit lower yesterday. What are you seeing on the platform when it comes to all those trades? They kind of they came in vogue uh, when we got closer to the election than certainly after the election. Sure. Well, when there's a major fundamental inflection, the markets cannot reprice fast enough, right? And retail is always the forefront of that, right? Whether it's chasing momentum, whether it's chasing that speculative trade, uh, you know, you put Kramer, the, the session on Kramer yesterday that there were scalpers out there. Listen, the stock went up 35% for Tesla. You see transports following suit just because, you know, the Dow is that major indicator. Uh, so the fact that we're seeing retail get involved in these momentum trades is not surprising at all. Platform like Webull, we cater to a lot of speculative trades at times, and we saw volumes that been through the roof. So if I take the volume of the week prior to the election versus the volume post-election, we saw more than a 26% increase in overall volume, and that's a broad-based volume number, whether it's transport names, Russell 2000 names, or individual stocks like Tesla. All right. So you're saying a lot of this isn't surprising. Has anything happened on the retail investor side that has been a bit surprising to you? Uh, following the election, any flows are either in or out that you kind of were like, hmm, I didn't see that one coming? Yeah, so uh, Bitcoin ETF um, has always been popular for retail, but we just saw an explosion over the last week in terms of demand where it became some of our top traded uh, symbols on the platform, which typically it's dominated by NVIDIA, Tesla, uh, Microsoft, Apple, and of course, SPY and the Qs. This time, we're seeing the Bitcoin ETFs uh, as customers want exposure to a space where they see deregulation and instead of uh, regulation by enforcement, from the SEC, there is this, I think, change of mindset that we're going to start seeing some pro-crypto adoption and some quality reg regulation coming from the next administration.